Very pleased now to be joined by the one, the only, the legendary, the handsome, the debonair, the universally famous. You know him, you love him. I really don't know from everywhere. I, I guess everywhere is appropriate. Um, WFAN might be the, the most appropriate if we have to kind of own in on one singular spot, but it is a uh, great friend of mine, great friend of Blog and the Boys, Keith McPherson. Keith, what are your thousand jobs? I, and uh, When <laughs> do you ever sleep? Um, I really have no clue. You are, if there is a hustler, um, he is uh, well behind you as far as pace. That's my job to hustle, to get it, to get after it and find ways to just continue building on what I've started. Um, thanks for having me. I I really can't, you know, I'm a radio host. I would say that's my, <laughs> my main source of income. I'm on the radio every night in New York City. It's funny, um, you know, <laughs> I just was listening to Tiki Barber's show. So for the Dallas Cowboys fans that uh, are familiar with, obviously, Tiki Barber, Barber and the Giants, I am a Cowboys fan that goes on air on the station that um, literally has a Giants great hosting and all Giants fans listening. So I'm a little bit of an odd you know, person in that sense, but like I'm a Yankees fan and that carries me through. I'm a Nets fan as well, but that's misery. Um <laughs> And yeah, like I've, I've done MLB Network. I had the show on MLB Network last year. I had a, a baby, so I stepped out of that this year, but I was just back on there. I do Bleacher Report streams, talking baseball, talking basketball. And uh, the funny thing is I played quarterback in college. I was an all-state quarterback, state champion my senior year. Um, and I, I've kind of just figured it out everywhere but football. Uh, you know, my fandom in baseball and basketball has carried me. But I think this is the year that I expand uh, more into the NFL coverage, more talking football, which I played so I can speak at a different level. And I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. How about them Cowboys? Um, I think I'm going to start leaning more into that. No, I mean, I think you should. Um, again, I you, you're just everywhere all the time. Um, I feel like every app I have, there's some level of like Keith infiltrating <laughs> it, uh, which is a good thing. I think if um, I know you you shared your July 4th story, people should go to your Instagram reel. Yeah. That, you had. that was really, really cool. Um, but I mean, I feel like if if you look up like modern, like I, I used to call myself a blogger and then I used to call myself like an internetsman and like, I don't like content creator, such a weird, you know, label, but uh, whatever that is, um, you know, if, if there's a, a poster for that, I want you to be on the cover. Um, you, you mentioned the baby it looks like you and the family are doing well. You forgot the cat. Um, I enjoy uh, the cat's appearances on, on your Instagram <laughs> uh, every now and then uh, you mentioned you're a Yankees fan. I feel like there's a really, there's obviously a really popular crossover between Cowboys and Yankees fans. I get it way worse, I think. Like, not to make myself a martyr, but like being a Cowboys and Astros fan is is a really upsetting thing to like the DFW. In what happened to the Rangers? That, the Rangers I, had Dallas Cowboys night like a month ago. You're supposed to be a Rangers fan. They're good this year. See, like, I think people don't understand. Like, you and I are similar ages. I'm 33. Um, so, like, growing up, you know, I grew up in South Texas, like like near the border of Mexico. So obviously the Cowboys are like the team. The Texans didn't exist. I'm a Spurs fan because San Antonio is like the closest, like, yep. you know, big city. And the Astros were just kind of like I have family in Houston. So it all kind of like, you know, melded together that way. So like, you know, you agree, certainly, although I know you're a Nets guy like this, like you have to root for one city thing is stupid to me. Like you, you, you can root stupid. for whoever you want. It is stupid, especially now, right? I understand in the uh, 80s when you had to right. listen to your local radio or your cable TV only showed you sure. one team. But now we're in an era where you can get every game. You can buy a package to watch any team in any market. And then with the internet, with social media, it's easy to follow all of your team accounts. I can follow you blogging the boys and live in Idaho and be fully up on the Dallas Cowboys. And yeah, I'm a Nets fan, but I was a Bulls fan first. Uh, when Jordan retired, I'm from New Jersey. I just went with the home team because I wasn't going to follow Jordan to the Wizards. And then the team came to Brooklyn. And I don't know. I tell people, root for who you want to root for. Everybody's story is different. And, and try and stay down for your team. Stay loyal. There's a ton of people that would love for me to switch over and be a Giants fan on the radio because they like me as, you know, the Yankee representative. But I'm like, nah, I, di I didn't pick my football team thinking I'd be on New York City WFAN radio like I, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan because they won three Super Bowls before I was nine years old and uh, they were pop culture Americana they were on TV they were great you know they put up 50 points in the Super Bowl when I first could like watch the Super Bowl and care about it and I'm like that's my team. Yeah I mean I, the pop culture part of it I think is is not mentioned often enough like 
you turn on Jerry Maguire in the mid nineties and like, who are the Cardinals playing in the like big moment? You know what I mean? It's the Cowboys or like any given Sunday. It's like, Oh, who's the the bad team. They have to beat the like amazing team. It's Dallas. Like who's the team and the replacements they have to be. It's, it's Dallas. Like that's not the Cowboys, like whatever, but still like it, that, that was a big part. I think of, of a lot of people's fan fandom being molded. Uh, my last thing before we get into today's topic, um, you mentioned Tiki Barber, the Giants thing. Um, again, similar ages. Who like maybe the answer is the Giants for you, given your locale. But like, who's like the top division rival for you? Because I like I don't know anyone who really feels like the Giants are like that one. But again, maybe it is just specific specific to your circumstances. I grew up hating the Giants. I gotcha. grew up with uh, an older brother who was a Giants fan. You know, when I was like four, there's a picture of me in a Giants starter jacket that I didn't choose, that I didn't pick, that they put on me. By the time I turned five, I was able to say, no, I don't want that. I want the the Dallas starter jacket without even really knowing where Dallas was located. Uh, the biggest rival for me now is the Eagles. I grew up hating the Giants, but I've grown to absolutely despise <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles in probably the last 10 years since they won the Super Bowl, went to the Super Bowl, and their fan base just seems to get more obnoxious and stronger um, every week. Yeah, they are. Um, they're like the the monster and like Stranger Things. You're right. Like like the, like you know, <laughs> ammunition just like feeds them. Um, I've said this many times, and I wore my Astros jersey, my Craig Biggio Astros jersey uh, for Europeans here. Um, this could never happen, obviously, with the Cowboys. But like the fact that my baseball team has a world title against the city of Philadelphia is like I know I'm sure you're not fond of the Astros, but like that's just a, a special kind of sweet. You know what I mean? That like again, the Cowboys and the Eagles could never meet in the Super Bowl, so like I could never totally achieve that um but yeah so um shout out to the phillies for losing the world series the, <laughs> the um, city of losers can't spell philly without two l's lost in the world series lost in the super bowl exactly um okay so are you a marvel fan keith like of or do you I not am. have time well no. i mean like you when do you again i don't know when you sleep as it is just because of work i'm not like, as like personal deep life. <laughs> i'm not as deep in it as i used to be but i used to ride my bike to comics plus buy comic books and then um, DC movies were bigger as far as like Batman, Superman. Sure. But then when X-Men came out, the Marvel comic universe took over cinema and what they've been able to do in the last 20 years, since I went to, you know, my birthday party to see the first Spider-Man in like 2002 or 2003, they've dominated. And, uh, you know, I still rep, uh, Marvel. I still, you, you'll see me, uh, I had a post where I was wearing a Thor shirt to work because i was so disgusted with the yankees and i'm like what do i wear i just put on a thor shirt i got x-men captain america incredible hulk thor uh, all those shirts still in my closet i'm definitely a marvel guy right on well so um there is a show that a friend of mine recommended to me um that i i watched like in the background last year that's called what if have you seen this or heard of this before i haven't seen this so it's on disney plus not an ad but just if somebody wants to watch it um and it's an animated show um and i think once you understand the premise you'll understand why um it's called what if like that's literally what it's called but i think it's called like what if with some like ellipses and a question a question mark uh we're just going to title this what if no punctuation necessary um and so the premise is they explore certain marvel storylines that we have seen in the movies um but like with a butterfly effect of sorts like if, if something was a little bit different like what if um i don't quite remember but like what if the hulk was the leader of guardians of the galaxy stuff like that like you know whatever like these weird kind of choose your own adventure kind right, of like like like, like these kind of like mixture of ordering pizza for lunch one person ordered a hamburger and then that like changed the course of history forever um so it, and i don't know if my internet's go, uh, i think my internet's back so i don't know I if, so if you, I, you're in and out but i can still hear you i was about to say yeah. it reminded me um from what you're saying and now i'm looking it up i have seen it advertised but like you mentioned i don't have time i don't i don't have time to watch anything outside of live sports which i have to speak on i don't have time to start any streaming shows when I do, I fall asleep on them because the only thing I can keep my attention is like a live game. But yes, right. this made exactly. me think of Doctor Strange and the multiple outcomes. That's exactly what this parallel is. universes. Yeah. Yeah. In the lead up to that movie, that's why my friend was like, you should watch the show. What if? Because it kind of like explores the idea of the multiverse or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like all these different, you know, there's a universe out there where Keith McPherson wore the Giants jacket and is like a hardcore Giants <laughs> fan now on WFAN every day. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so the question here today is what if, so I've asked you to prepare two what ifs for us. I have two myself. I told you they could be positive or negative. It can be anything you want. It can be player related team. It can be super wide, super microscopic. You are the guest. So what is your first what if as it relates to the Cowboys? This is one that I heard on WFN over the weekend. 
Um, these Giants fans are looking for anything to poke holes into the Dallas Cowboys, right? Now, we know Mike McCarthy uh, has struggled just calling timeouts. What if Mike McCarthy has lost his touch and struggles calling plays and it turns into a mess of a disaster? What if that's not the right move now that we've moved on from Kellen Moore? Um. So I will not be heartbroken if that's the case. Like, I'll be very frustrated, obviously. Like, it will not be a fun fall in a lot of ways and fun winter. And then, you know, they'll be looking for a new head coach in all likelihood. But the the point I brought up when they first, like, you know, went down this path um, is you have to see this. Like, like you you have to know. Like, you, you cannot let the Mike McCarthy era go by without – understanding this without letting him call like the dude whether you believe it was all Aaron Rodgers and he was just there just hanging out whatever the dude won a Super Bowl calling place like yeah. on offense like you you have to see like and the analogy I brought up is like what if I don't know the Vikings hired Dan Quinn like as I, I mean that doesn't make sense but still like what if the Vikings hired Dan Quinn and they were like oh we don't want you to call plays on defense that would be so stupid like you know what I mean like we would sit here and be like y'all are so dumb um and I know that Mike McCarthy is an easy punching bag. He's an easy meme. People make fun of him left and right, and he lost a PR battle to the aforementioned Aaron Rodgers, so the world thinks he's just this big dunce. Uh, but at the very least, I would be satisfied that we we learned, right? Like, it, obviously, I would prefer that it would be awesome and he would be this amazing play caller, but if he sucks at it, then at least we know. I would have I would have hated if they had fired him or he had never coached or called plays, and then he had done some, like, Peter King sit down and was like, you know, I never really got to call plays, blah, blah, blah. Because we, we would then really have to ask, what if? Like, what if Mike McCarthy really was this amazing play caller that we didn't get to experience because the Cowboys were obsessed with Kellen Moore? Is that fair? Yeah, that is fair. And what I'll say to that is I don't worry about that. I'm hearing Giants fans call in like, this is going to be a disaster for these guys. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. Well, I know Dak Prescott is the captain, the general, the quarterback of the team. I'm repping him today because I think he's going to have – a bounce back year. I kind of made a parallel to um, Garrett Cole last year. Garrett Cole uh, led the league with 33 home runs given up. That's unlike Garrett Cole. Last year, what we saw with Dak Prescott and the interceptions and the turnovers, it's a fluke. It's a one-off year, a one-off thing. And there's no stat for assisted interceptions that were off a guy's chest or hands. I think he's going to be out for, you know, revenge. I think he's going to be out to show people, hey, I can take care of the football. And what he'll do in taking care of the football is get us out of bad plays. He'll check at the line. He'll see something and get us into the right play. I don't think it's a situation where Mike McCarthy can just, like, you know, drive us off a cliff. He can be the guy to call the plays, but Dak is going to make sure we're in the right play ultimately. I will say um... – there are a lot of people that are like, oh, man, they got rid of like Kellen and they got rid of Nussmeyer. They, they got rid of like Dak's buddies, you know, whatever. I kind of love that. Um, so big Dak fan, obviously, like, you know, big Dak defender. Like I've, I've earned my stripes on the Internet defending Dak Prescott against the masses. Um, but I kind of like this idea of like ruffling his feathers a little bit. You know, like I, I kind of like this idea of like making him shave the beard if we want to go like full Garrett Cole analogy. Uh, you know, like this is like. You, it can't just be the Dak Prescott way. That wouldn't be smart either. Like, like you, you know, and I know you're not proposing that, but like, we can't just like cater to like, well, Dak wants this, Dak wants that. Like, it has to be Dak everything. Like, no, we're like, run the ball. That's the whole thing McCarthy was saying. Like, I want to run the ball. We're not going to get in situations where we're throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, and turn it over. Um, we, we need to run the ball, but we'll have to figure out, you know, how Tony's doing and uh, Ronald Jones and uh, Deuce Vaughn and some of the other options. Do you believe in Ronald Jones? Like, you think that's a real thing, or you think he's like a, a cut candidate, like when they tripped down to 53? I think he was a low risk as far as what the contract is. I think they're going to pay him a million, and he's a veteran, and he's a guy that has now been on some championship teams. And, um, you know, that's just a guy you add for practice reps. And if he <laughs> excels in practice, then maybe he gets some touches in the game. Malik Davis, I left out. Um, we'll, we'll see. Tony Pollard's got to be ready to go, though. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I agree with Rojo. Like, and you know what? Like, that's how you should handle the running back position. Like, if he doesn't work out, okay, cool. Like, you cut him and like right now, if you really want Zeke's available, Kareem Hunt's available, Dalvin Cook's available, or like like, you know what I mean? Like, pick a guy. Like, there's a million guys right now available at the running back position. So um, whatever. That was a good what if. Um, negative, obviously. My first one's negative. I don't know if you have a positive one. Don't spoil it for us. 
Um, Negative always leads. If it right. leads, it leads. I'm on the radio in New York today. They're talking about Aaron Judge is done and he's going to need surgery on his toe. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's a lost season for the Yankees. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> Sad. Hate to see it. Um, 62. Um, now not Aaron Judge's number, but also Joey Chestnut has 62 hot dogs on uh, fourth of July. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, okay, my first one is negative, as mentioned. Um, I've never heard anybody ask this what if. I don't think this is a popular thing to say, which is why it's negative. What if? The Stefan Gilmore, like, what if, for lack of a better way to put this, what if Stefan Gilmore and Brandon Cooks are both cooked? Like, what if they're done? Like, what, like, what, what if they just like they don't come in and like save the day the way we've kind of like let our imaginations run wild? Like, what if Stefan Gilmore really is kind of washed? What if Brandon Cooks can't run anymore? Like, what if those aren't the answers that this team needed at those two specific positions? Then those guys better be leaders, veterans, <laughs> coaches on the field, <laughs> teaching the young guys everything they know. Cooks needs to be talking to CD and talking to Michael Gallup and Jalen Tolbert and the rest of the receiver group. And Stefan Gilmore needs to be teaching everything he can to uh, Trayvon Diggs and the rest of the DBs. Um, if they're not as effective as they once were, uh, they can still help the team with their presence and, and being pros and uh, being leaders and coaches on the field. But I get this feeling that they're not cooked. And here's another parallel for the Yankees Cowboys fans listening. Uh, we say there's power in pinstripes. We see guys put on the pinstripes and all of a sudden they're throwing a perfect game. And these were guys that weren't good or no one wanted. Uh, there's power in that uh, star on, on your helmet. And uh, these guys are two guys that I think have wanted to be Cowboys that have played on different teams and have seen what it's like elsewhere. You know, they've both been Patriots. Um, I think that they're ready to lock in and, and get it done in Dallas. And it's not a long project. It's the right now thing. It's a win now year. I've said this already many times this offseason, but when they traded for Gilmore, I was kind of shocked. Not that I like think Gilmore sucks or anything, but I was kind of shocked at how like Micah and Trayvon and everybody reacted. Like how they were like, oh man, we got the guy. Like I always knew like Stefan Gilmore was like a guy. You know what I mean? But like I didn't I just never regarded him as like the guy. And, and so like that that they were freaking out about that. Like it's cool. And I've said this many times as well. Uh, when the Cowboys signed Joe McCoy in 2020, that was like at the beginning of the McCarthy era, I likened that to the Charles Woodson signing that the Packers had. Because it was like, man, you've got this young team, th these young dudes that, you know, have been there and done it, but they don't, you know, they need that like big brother. They need that, that you know, that dude. Like, I agree with you. There is power in pinstripes. There is power in the star, whatever. But if you give somebody who independent of that has enough power on their own and, you you know, and then you give them that like, it's like Nas. You know what I mean? Like, it just takes off to a different level. So, I do think there's something to like getting these high reputation dudes and then giving them the shine um, that in this case, the Cowboy star provides. And I, I do think that that is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Um, so yeah, even if, you know, Gilmore isn't defensive player of the year or Brandon cooks doesn't have a thousand yards, like he always does. I do think that their, their contributions ultimately will be more positive than negative. So good job talking me off the ledge. I remember, I think after the Colts game, both uh, Diggs and yeah. Parsons wanted Stefan Gilmore's Jersey. And that's a level of respect that you get on the field from your peers that watch film and that understand what you do. He neutralizes a side of the field when he's right. He's a lockdown, shutdown corner that like you can't have your way with. I kind of liken him to like Revis Island. Like, he, you know, he's the type of guy that they know his impact, even on a team that was as terrible as the Colts. So, you know, those guys reacting to that, they know like, hey. Now we have Diggs on one side who's, you know, been known to pick the ball off. He's got to get right this year. He's got to tackle. He's got to he's got to bring everything. But then you put Gilmore on the other side. That's going to make his job easier, Mike, Micah Parsons' job easier. And Gilmore took that number 21. It's prime time, baby. You can't put that 21 on and go out there and be washed and be cooked. Dion might get on the phone and uh, have Jerry Jones put you on the line. So I think Gilmore's ready to go. And uh, they're both going to shine this year. I never loved Zeke in 21, if I'm being honest. Like, it just, like, he was in a 21. Like, I think of 21 and I think of, like, a, like a, a, a fast really, number. Yeah, like a really <laughs> fast corner. Um, I, th I really wanted Zeke to wear 33 at the time. Um, I thought that would have been awesome, but it just didn't happen. And so he wore 15 at Ohio State. State came in and took 21, and they took that 21 easily and gave it to Stephen Gilmore. I don't think he comes back to the Cowboys just off of that. He can't get his jersey back.
Well, if you want the conspiracy theory, Keith, um, so Zeke's first tweet after the Cowboys released him was, I need my 15 back. Because at the time when he was drafted, um, you know, running backs and other position players couldn't, couldn't wear, couldn't wear yeah. it. N- now they can. Um, so whatever team he's on, he is certainly eligible to wear 15 now. But if so, the conspiracy theory would be that he returns to the Cowboys. And now that 21 is, is on Gilmore, that Zeke gets his college 15, which he tweeted that he wanted. Again, his first tweet. Um, and that the Cowboys then sell a billion Zeke 15 jerseys <laughs> after having sold a billion Zeke 21 jerseys. That's yeah. the conspiracy theory. It's a good theory. It's a good thought. But, like, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of over Zeke. Uh, it hurt to be in that position that we were last year when TP went down and all you had was Zeke. I understand Dak loves him. They're best friends. I understand he's a great pass blocker. But, you know, uh, even his contract hurts. And that's why you had to move on from him. You can't be paying a guy that's past his prime $16 million, um, especially in a league where they're tagging the best running backs at $10 million. So, yeah, um, we'll see. I think if there's an injury and Zeke is still unsigned and hasn't landed anywhere, then Zeke pop probably comes back and wears that 15. But I think the, we'll the Cowboys know they have to be more dynamic and more explosive. And if Mike McCarthy, the head coach, is talking about running the football, uh, two, three yards per carry with Zeke is, is not what we're looking for um agreed okay so uh this is really like we started off like really fun like oh the cowboys giants suck like 90s bulls whatever and then we got really negative uh, so i hope that your other what if is a bit more on the positive side of the spectrum <laughs> yeah uh so what if the cowboys do put it all together and what if this is the year i'm ready to be hurt again I, i'm 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 ready <laughs> i'm healed but like what if this is the year that they do get to the super bowl or let's let's pull it back to the NFC Championship. Got to got to walk before you run. Um, but what if this is the year that they put it all together, and then they do get back to the NFC Championship and the Super Bowl? Like that's going to shift a lot of things. So first of all, I, I mean obviously, like the obvious is it would be amazing, it would be incredible, blah blah blah. I don't think I would sleep. Like the whole like there would be like it would be impossible to cover everything. Like you know what I mean? The media week would be like insane you know i jerry would have like a full auditorium level press conference like it would be it would be wild um i think my computer would like overload with everything that i was trying to do um out of it but um i think if i dial it back to the nfc championship game so like every like there's a lot of cowboys fans like you see this too like you know wherever you are if it's on the internet whatever people say like i just want to reach the nfc championship game if the cowboys reached the nfc championship game that week would be euphoric right we would we would all be celebrating okay cool you got through if they lost though it would be worse than anything that that we've experienced over the last 30 years you know like that happens a lot it's like oh you know i just want like you know one slice of pizza and then you have a slice and you're like well why didn't i get two you know like you instantly <laughs> forget like you know your expectations and, and you get greedy like that's just human nature um so like as much as like the consensus can say, I just want to get there. If they got to the title game and lost, it would. You mentioned scars and getting hurt. It would hurt people worse than the Romo bobble, than Des catching it, than like pick pick your tragedy. Like it would be a million times worse. But if they won the NFC title game, I I'm a big believer in, and I I told a lot of Eagles, you know, people when I would do their podcasts at the time when when Philly was you know reigning champions. I was, you know, because they would like rub it in and make their jokes and, and they would laugh. And I'd be like, I, like, I don't think this is funny. Like you, you earned this. Like you have every right. Like you should rub it in people's faces every chance you get. Because that's yeah. like, that's the whole reason. Like we care. We follow. We love teams. We let them affect our moods as much as we do. So we like Cowboys. You mentioned it like that Eagles fans are this like monster that just like keep growing, you know, stronger and stronger and stronger. If the Cowboys won the NFC title game, those two weeks would be the loudest that they have ever been. Like, it, it would be the first time the Cowboys were in the Super Bowl in the social media era. You know what I mean? Like, it would be incredible. It would be I, – I I have no idea what it would be like if they won. I really think if they won the Super Bowl, it would just be one – like, no, no sport would matter at that point. Like, from, you know, February to the next year, like, nobody would care about the NBA Finals. Nobody would care about the Olympics or whatever. It would just be, did you know the Cowboys won the Super? They would clean up like every SB and award. It would be pandemonium in a way we've never seen before. It's time, RJ. We're due. And when you look around the NFC, who do you fear? The 49ers with Brock Purdy coming back? What's he going to be like in year two? Sophomore slump? Is that elbow okay? Okay, the Eagles in our own division. But I'm just a believer in the fact that like when you have a run like the Eagles did, it's hard to do it again. You're not surprising anyone. Now Hurts has all the money, and yeah, they had a good draft, but like 
we can beat them. If if I recall, we faced each other with backup quarterbacks. Let's face each other with Dak and uh, Hertz on the field for both games. And, you know, I guess you can look around the league and, and point to – there's no one else I can point to. Aaron Rodgers is playing for the Jets, right? The, the Green Bay Packers – aren't going to knock us out. The 49ers, I think, are going to take a step back. The Eagles, I'm not too worried about. Um, who, who out? I don't know. There's no There's no real NFC team that I'm like, they stack up better than the Dallas Cowboys. If the Cowboys stay healthy and put it all together, they very well could be back in the a- NFC championship this year. Yeah, I mean, you have to stretch. Like, maybe if you're somebody that believes in the Lions, if you, you know, if you don't think the Vikings were frauds last year, if – you believe in the Giants? Oh, let right? me guess. Like, the Saints are gonna do it with Derek Carr. Well, that's that's the year. or the Rams maybe bounce back. You know, maybe there's more health. Nah. Or, you know, but like again, like they're, they're, those are bigger ifs than even the Cowboys. If um, what if what if they made the Super Bowl and lost to the Chiefs? Like, how would you feel emotionally? Uh, if they made it to the Super Bowl and lost to the Chiefs, it would obviously hurt, but it wouldn't be as depressing as losing in the NFC Championship because we would get that run. We'd get the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. Right. It's in Vegas this year. You know how many Cowboys fans have it on their bucket list. The next time the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl, I'm going, and Vegas is a destination that can accommodate thousands of fans. And, uh, yeah, I I mean, if they lost to the Chiefs, that'd be crazy. But that's another thing. I just don't – I don't think – I mean, the Chiefs could get there, but I don't think they're winning back-to-back. I just I think there would be some solace and like oh like at least we lost to this all time team you know like to go back like we a can dynasty go back to like, team a team that's yeah, like, in their like, greatest years right now yeah right like we, we keep going back to this like you know these baseball things but like it bothers me forever that the Astros lost to the Nationals in the World Series you know what I mean because like, I I can't accept that you know what I mean like it just it wasn't something that like was sustainable and you like, were this it's close <laughs> right like but like that they lost to the Braves though like it's a little bit easier to kind of swallow because you're like oh well like we're looking at this like all time run like they'll probably get a team of more, destiny whatever. that year exactly. Yeah um but like the nationals thing is so difficult to swallow and so uh but that being said like if they lost to the chiefs i think you're right i do think the initial like fallout would be terrible um but then people would kind of be like well look mahomes has three because yeah, that would be the case then like it's andy reed he knows the cow you know like we would calm ourselves down but you're right i do think like even losing the super bowl is a big deal because you you get the two-week run like for two weeks everyone in the world is talking about you and i will say if the cowboys are gonna like you know Andy Dufresne get to the other side in any city, it would have to be Las Vegas, right? Like, like what is the most appropriate city for them to like break the curse? Like it would be, you know, Las Vegas. So, uh, yeah, um, the Davis family looking at the Joneses, like welcome in, you got back before we did. And actually like the Raiders, did the Raiders get to the Super Bowl? And yeah. With Rich Gannon. Yeah. They lost to the, the Gruden bucks. Um, so, you know, it's been but, a while. The Cowboys fans, uh, you know, Cowboys nation, uh, we, we need it just to get back to a Super Bowl so that those memes of like, oh, the Cowboys um, play their games on the History Channel or, right. you know, it's been since 96 since the Cowboys went to the Super Bowl NFC Championship. Like, that's too long. There's a whole generation of young Dallas fans that are pretty much Dallas fans for no reason. At least we could say we jumped on the bandwagon <laughs> when they were going to the Super Bowl consistently and winning them. I used to say my favorite way to put it. There's a lot of embarrassing ways, but my favorite way is the last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, were in the title game, pick whatever you want. John Elway did not have a Super Bowl win of any kind. Um, he since then obviously won two as a player, retired, sat out the mandatory period, was enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, began a whole new career in <laughs> in football management, um, which was obviously aided by his you know persona and who he was as a, as an NFL quarterback. Um, became the general manager of the Denver Broncos and built his own team that won a Super Bowl, which literally included one of the greatest Dallas Cowboys players of all time in DeMarcus Ware, who now, after winning that Super Bowl, has sat out the mandatory time and is now also going into the Hall of Fame. Like TikTok. it's just it's it's so much time, and we consume so much football, and you work on so much football, and the time just keeps going by, and we're waiting on this team. Like we're in another championship window, right? We were in a championship w- 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 window with uh, Romo, Dez, Witten. You know, now we're in another championship w- window with Dak and CD and Micah and and Tank and you know this defense and now this offense and. You know, it, it hurts to think that they if they would have been able to score 20, 21 points, they would have advanced uh, last year. But now I just look at it like, why can't it be this year? Um, my final what if is positive, but has like a, a 
a hint of negative. Um, but that's like life as a Cowboys fan, as you well know. Um, so I said I'm ready to be heard again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard this comparison before. I don't think it's apt. Um, but I've heard people compare the Cowboys to the Sixers in, in terms of like not being able to break out of, of a certain, you know, part no, of the playoffs. No. I know, I know, but hear me out. So, um, yeah. so Embiid wins MVP, like, and, and Sixers fans like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then, like, even after the finals, people are like, I'd still take him over you. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, it's just the dumbest thing of he all time. He folded, but right. Yeah. But so, my point is, or my what if is, so, like, to kind of take things back, the night of NFL honors, I was just kind of doing my standard, like, getting things ready for the site and whatever for the next day, you know, just kind of quietly. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Dak Prescott wins, Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. Like, holy crap, batting down the hatches. Like, we got to do all this stuff for this that, like, was totally unexpected, whatever. And it did feel like this low-key, like, kind of win. And it, obviously, it's a prestigious award. And what's cool about it is it, you know, honors who Dak is as a person, et cetera, et cetera. But so my what if is, what if Dak won MVP? Like, just straight-up, normal MVP. But the Cowboys didn't win the Super Bowl. Like, I think we would cope the, the, the way that Sixers fans are coping about MVP. Or the other Philly team. Um, I know I know. Uh, Hurts didn't win the MVP, but, like, Hurts having the season sure. that he had, they're like, we have our guy now, and he's solidified. Uh, nah, we don't want MVPs. We want, like, MVPs are so, their so team it, awards. but It wouldn't mean anything to you if Dak won MVP, but the Cowboys didn't even, let's say, nah. make the title game. It would be hollow? It it would it would be it would be not enough. It would be uh, second place. It would be deflating. It'd be like that's cool and all, but we still didn't get it done. There would still be jokes written on Twitter every day. Like, okay, you have the MVP, but uh, you know the MVP doesn't go on to win the Super Bowl. Um, like you use the Embiid comparison, like winning the MVP in the regular season, then failing in the playoffs. It's almost it just like tarnishes your MVP. Look at Jokic. Jokic didn't win the MVP. He right. went on to win the finals and the finals MVP. You got to get to the top. And, uh, you know, these other awards, like I think Micah Parsons should win defensive player of the year this year. I thought I think he could have won it last year. Um, but I think he's, you know, looking to do it this year and they're going to use him in a way where he'll be able to, you know, possibly pad his stats. But like these individual awards are not it. This fan base is starving for and needs a return to the Super Bowl and a Super Bowl win. I agree with you. I do think, I think at times I've been guilty of being one of these. I think there are people that sometimes because we, we argue on behalf of Dak and have before, you know, for Romo, you know, like, again, you've had those arguments where it's like, you're arguing with somebody who just don't, doesn't get it. They, they want to talk about like wins or interceptions. And they're just like diluting it down to this one teeny tiny point that is so dumb and so frustrating. So we, we get like so over defensive of these quarterbacks that we, we then like, Again, we're too far past. Like, we don't see, like, the flaws or we're, like, over magnifying what they offer. And so I do think if Dak were to win MVP, I don't think this is the case with Micah yet because nobody hates Micah. Like, there's not a Cowboys fan who hates Micah. There's a lot of Cowboys fans who hate Dak, obviously. Micah is at Dak the Michael the Rubin white party with uh, Tom <laughs> Brady and OBJ and Joe Burrow. And Dez, like, Dez, and was, Dez there? was there, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Micah Parsons is, like, a face of the league. He That's is. what I'm He's saying. Got one like, of the top he, selling jerseys, like. People love He's him. universally loved. I think Dak winning MVP would would be like a small. It would not be the Super Bowl, obviously, but like I do think it would be a small victory for some people. It, it would be this big, like I told you so. Like I told you, he really was well, this amazing quarterback. RJ, if Dak wins the MVP, that means we're gonna have a hell of a September, October, <laughs> November, some of December. Like that means Sundays are gonna be a lot of fun because he's putting up numbers. But ultimately, the fun that you want to have, because I say this all the time on air. In New York, I'm like, yeah, I'm a Cowboys fan, but it's not as fun as it looks. It's fun on Sunday to watch your team, and it's fun that they get primetime games and Thanksgiving and Thursday night football, Sunday night football, Monday night football, and they're able to win. But the game that you want the most is that first-round exit. Or in this case, this year, luckily we got the corpse of Tom Brady, and uh, you know we, we got to celebrate for a week, but we kind of knew going into that Niners game, like, here we go with the Niners again. This is going to be tough. And when you lose that game, it hurts. It, it's it's a it's a, a fail. It's a shortcoming. It, it erases all of the fun that you have for four months in the season. Uh, but if Dak wins MVP, like yeah, we're gonna be having a good time. 
Yeah, I told you it had a bit of bit of negative to it. You know what I mean? But like, actually, before you kind of like said it, my what if was going to be like, what if it just happens? Like, what if they win the Super Bowl? So you you, st- you took the good one. Um, so I had to kind of like make lemonade out of um out of the remaining one. Yeah, but-, but it's all good. We're Cowboys fans, like I said. We the, the negative. We're used to the negative. Sure. Uh, it comes with the territory, right? It's hard being a Dallas Cowboys fan. We're we're used to it. Um, Keith, this has been super fun. Um, everyone can listen to you on WFAN and I, I think the best place is probably to follow you on social media. Cause you're really good yeah. about like, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be there. Like it is a great like hub for everything that you do. Um, so plug away, give us everything that we need to get the full Keith McPherson experience. It wouldn't be me if they didn't create Twitter and Instagram and TikTok now, and even YouTube. Uh, what I, what I said on my post yesterday, um, it was July 7th when I walked out of the corporate job that I was doing digital marketing for actually working with guys like Saquon Barkley, Leonard Fournette, Todd Gurley, um, you know, helping them post for like Gatorade or Under Armour. But I was a behind the scenes guy. I felt like a minion. I felt like someone that uh, was nothing, someone that they could text at one in the morning because it's not one in the morning out West and you got to wake up and do something or, you know, really just someone that was in a position to do what you're told. And this is five years ago when You know, some of these corporate companies didn't really understand the power of social media, but I did. So what I did was take my corporate experience behind the scenes, uh, working at these different companies in New York City for about five years. And when I got let go, I said, no more, um, no more working for other people as far as like taking my knowledge and, and my skills. I'm like, I need to build my own. So I started to build my Twitter. I started to build my Instagram and I'm blessed. It all came to me. Uh, a lot of prayer, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, uh, tears, brokenness, feeling like you're losing, feeling like you ruined your life, feeling like like you you had one career and you threw it away on a dream that was not going to connect. And then, boom, little by little, things start happening to show me that I was on the right way. And here we are now, five years later, coming up on July 7th. And it was the best decision I ever made in my life. It changed my life. It put me where I belong. I'm a sports fan. I played everything growing up. I care about sports more than I care about any other form of entertainment or any field or whatever. So uh, you can find me at Twitter or at Keith McPherson on Twitter, Instagram. Everything's just my first and last name because I kind of went into this trying to be seen, trying to be heard. And now I am seen on MLB Network. I'm seen on Bleacher Report and I'm heard every night on the greatest sports radio station in the world, WFAN. And it all started with just a dream but really uh, it was dreams and nightmares i i went through some terrible times uh collecting unemployment um driving lyft uber I have like 700 lyft uber rides uber eats delivering people's wendy's into their you know apartment building uh, just feeling worthless but now i'm on top of the world man i i cannot complain i'm blessed i you know my son is 12 weeks on thursday uh You know, I've connected with you just off of you being a sports fan and um, putting two and two together that, hey, you're a Cowboys fan. Uh, You know, even, uh, you know, some of the other people in the Cowboys space have reached out to me. And I think now is the time this season uh, to really start, you know, expanding into uh, Cowboys content. So I I thank you for that. I thank you for bringing me into your podcast and just being solid. I told you I was a fan of yours following you for years without ever connecting. So. Um, I appreciate what you do. I hope you're living out all your dreams and I, I hope to keep working with you and connecting with you and the rest of the Dallas Cowboys nation. You're the man, Keith, and, and your story is really inspiring. Um, it reminds me, uh, my, my dad would tell me when I was, you know, kind of down trying to figure out my way, um, you know, and you, you know, you get luck obviously along the way and, and certain doors open for you. But, you know, I remember when, when I was just so frustrated with things, he would say, you know, like son, there's going to come a day where you're going to be so busy that you you'll look back and you'll say, man, if I had just at that time had a fraction of what I have going on now, I like <laughs> I would I would have been so happy. And um, it sounds like you've got that going on. And um, it's very cool how you, you're you're really self-made. Um, we're big fans of you at Blog and the Boys, and we'll always root for you, except when the Astros, you know, sweep the Yankees and the LCS, obviously. Um, but um, not gonna happen this year. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll we'll dance in the wild card round. Right. That'd be interesting. I was um, at the 2015 wild card game when you guys knocked us out. I caught Kobe Rasmus home run and threw it back from section 204 right next to where the bleacher creatures are. That was me. Cool. If you can go back and find that tape, I threw it right over Carlos Beltran's head. Um, but you yeah, know, man. 
Uh, you can find like that's where like MLB's got the NFL lapped on that stuff. Like in like three minutes, I could go find that clip. On, yeah, you know in their I mean? film like, room, you can yeah, find like, Kobe Rasmus home run off of Masahiro Tanaka. I forget the inning where it went in the bleachers. It bounced up to me, and I'm the one that threw it back. I think that's they cut saying. the camera off, but you can see the ball come back, and that was me. But that's awesome, um, dude. To go uh, with what you were saying before we close, you know, you got to go through it to get to it. People think that like because they see people making it on social media, that they're just gonna start doing something and pop. Right. I put that video out and people were like, thank you for saying what you said about getting no views or having no followers. I'm like, yeah, well, everyone starts at zero unless you're already famous. And if you quit on yourself because only four people are watching your live stream and only 10 people liked your video, then like you're never going to build. And I, I didn't stop. And I, I got frustrated uh, because what I tell people all the time is it was quiet for me. I wanted to be this content creator. I wanted to be this analyst. I wanted to be this host this guy out there but then i kept trying to go back to my old job being a social media manager and i was applying to jobs and i was striking out and then my wife credit to her she's like stop confusing the universe who do you want to be do you want to go back to your old gig or did you actually step out into this and once i just said like you know what it's going to be hard it's going to be frustrating but eventually it's going to get better now i'm i'm booked and uh like you said, you see me everywhere, and that's a product of me saying, hey, I'm taking every opportunity that I get because once upon a time, I had no opportunities. I was broke. I was unemployed. I was at home, and it was quiet for me. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Um, there's a, a great guy. His name is Matt Harmon. does a great job with reception perception, and I once heard him tell his story, and he talked about how like when he, um, when he started, he was trying to do things like power rankings, and he was like, I don't like, I don't do this. <laughs> it was like, that's not my thing. Like, you know, I need to find my thing. And like, it's such a cliche, but like people want to follow Keith McPherson or listen to Keith McPherson because of what Keith McPherson has to say. Not, not because Keith McPherson's trying to be somebody else or whatever. Right. Um, and so be like, you, you got to only be you. Everybody else is taken. It's Create not what cliche, there is not. I can't truth. try and be Stephen A. Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't try and be any of these guys that exist out here. I'm in New York. It's the hardest market to make it. I had to kick the door in being different. Even the fact that I'm a Yankees Cowboys fan is different. People try and hate on it, but I'm still winning. I'm still figuring it out. And now I know when I tap into the Dallas Cowboys fans this season, that's the biggest fan base in football. When when Dallas Cowboys fans accept me in with open arms, that just puts another battery in my back. So I'm blessed, man. It all came through organically. That's well said. I think something that I help people that, you know, want to do whatever um, is is what you said about sometimes there are no views. I like, I, you know, I'm fortunate that I have some tweets that like, I don't, I don't know if any of us are going to have tweets that take off in the future. I don't know what that looks like, but I mean, whatever. Uh, that's, Elon that's, Musk that's a conversation for place. a different day. But, um, but for, for every like tweet or post or video or whatever that like takes off and blows up, I have a thousand other that flopped and failed that, you know, nobody saw like whatever, like, you you gotta like you're not gonna bat a thousand you're, yeah you're, like, you're not gonna bat 500 <laughs> yeah i mean but it's um it's it's a fun life and i wouldn't choose any other um and it doesn't sound like you would and, and that's what makes me happiest uh keith mcpherson you're the best um as we sign off i know you don't watch movies or tv or anything that isn't live sports what uh, if is on the board now well, <laughs> the board now? i was gonna say uh give us um uh, give us a recommendation it's summer like people i mean like you and I love baseball, but not everybody does. Not everybody's cup of tea. So if somebody's looking for like something to watch, you know, for the next three weeks, they got some time before training camp starts. What's a movie or show you recommend? A movie or show I recommend that I've watched. Uh, I can say I've watched White Lotus. My wife put me on a White Lotus. Okay. That was pretty decent. Um, other than that, like I said, I don't have time. I just started The Idol on HBO Max, which is I'm a big fan of The Weeknd. I just think he kills everything. And I was a fan of the weekend in like 2010 uh, before he really got on. So I, I just watched that first episode last night, but I was falling asleep on it. Um, here's what I'll do. I'll tell you what I watch as a sports fan. Uh, I'm on MLB network on off base. Uh, that was a show that, you know, I was one of the cast members on every show and helped create it. I stepped out of it, but I was just on it. I'll be back on it again. Um, that's a cool show. First of its kind on, on um, MLB network. But if you want to be up on baseball, watch quick pitch every night. They give you the highlights, Sports Center style of the whole league. Um, watch Quick Pitch on MLB Network, and uh, you know football wise, obviously NFL Live on ESPN. I love you know they just fired everybody at ESPN, but those people didn't lose their gigs. Those people are just going to get elevated. NFL Live is great, um, and in basketball, NBA Today, 
And, uh, you know, there's a ton of content on YouTube. I, I think, you know, we've gotten to a point where whatever team you like, whatever um, sport you like, you can find like a niche guy or, or gal or a couple people that cover that for you every couple of days on YouTube. And uh, that's how you, go, that's how you, you know, you, you become more of a well-versed fan and that's how you kind of like fill your time with, um, you know, content that you love and that might also help you with your job. That's what I do. I really don't even have the time to watch, um, you know, like fake shows about stuff because it right. doesn't help me. I'll get on the radio and I'm like, I should, I have to watch the Yankees. I have to watch the Mets. I have to know about the whole league football starting. I got to know about the giants and the jets. And I'm a Cowboys fan, so I'm always taking in um, that kind of content, sports-related content. I think that's really well put. Um, I, I don't think you're a soccer guy. I mean, maybe at some point. Um, but so um, I worked I'm at the Fubo cliche. TV, and that was the most <laughs> I learned about soccer working at Fubo TV. But I, it, it didn't stick with me. It just kind of opened my eyes to like Champions League, Europa League, right. Bundesliga, <laughs> and like all of those They're different the best. soccer leagues. Yeah. Um, well, so I'm like, you're the, the cliche Cowboys Yankees fan. I'm the cliche Cowboys Manchester United fan. Um, and so like, obviously it's difficult. Like that's a different thing. Like it's an international thing, but um, there's a YouTube channel that I follow the United stand. They have like 1.3 million subscribers. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? But like to your point, like it's like create your own TV. You know what I mean? Create your own, you know, consumption. Like there's, there's something no for every team. If, yeah. if you can put it together and put it out there, if you build it, they will come like like that's that's for real. And uh, that was my message, a part of, you know, what I was saying with my independence. Like there, there's no gatekeepers now. I snuck into the media because I built my social media. <laughs> and it's like I kept having things on Twitter and Instagram that would do numbers. And then when they actually brought me in, they saw that I went to school for radio and television and I have a communication degree. I always got to add that part for people like I went to school for this stuff. I went, it took me 11 years from graduating to get back into the media, but like that definitely helped that I had that, that stamp to say, oh, this guy studied and went to school for it. Um, he has the talent, but he also has the paperwork to say that like, you know, this is what he wanted to do. It just took a while. Everyone's story is unique and yours is awesome. Keith McPherson, thanks so much for hanging out. I uh, can't wait to talk to you next time. How about them cowboys? <laughs>